And Syria, big time in the headlines again, two real hot spots. We'll start with this, the northern city of Afrin. That's come under heavy shelling from the Turkish army. Ankara's ramped up its operation in that region to try to dislodge the Kurdish fighters, which it says and sees are terrorists. That bombardment came after a pro-Syrian government militia arrived in Afrin to join the fight against the Turkish military. For his part, Turkey's President Erdogan saying the shelling forced that group of fighters to retreat 10 kilometers, but other conflicting reports suggest, in fact, the pro-Syrian government forces have actually taken up positions now in Afrin. <laughs> You're currently seeing here pictures of their arrival, purported to be on Tuesday night. Our senior correspondent, Murad Gazdiev, next takes a closer look at this unfolding, very complicated, volatile situation. This was a demonstration. Hundreds of pro-Assad militia fighters with tanks, armor, brazenly riding into Afrin with smiles, cheers and cameras. <laughs> The Turks, well, see for yourself. Ankara's response was explosive, loaded and delivered in artillery shells. Today, towards evening, it was determined by the HTS militia that about 10 pickup trucks were coming towards Afrin. They were then forced to turn back following the shelling. This case has been closed for now. Erdogan warned that this would happen. No one may help the YPG, he said. As for the Kurds themselves, he's promised to put them in a chokehold in mere days. The preparation on the ground takes time. In the coming days, we will lay siege to the city of Afrin. Here you have two major anti-ISIS coalition partners, terrorist and aggressor, as they call each other, Turkey and the YPG, a partner in all but name, duking it out, beating each other to bloody pulp. One might ask, where is America, the head of the US-led anti-ISIS coalition? Why are you still here? Why are these weapons still arriving? America is in the process of creating a terrorist army on our border. Do not encroach on our borders. Do not provoke us. We will run out of patience. Let's not forget how it all began with this statement, a U.S. declaration that it would build an army of Kurds to patrol the Turkish border. That sent Erdogan into a fit, rage. And it was that statement that was used to justify this new war. Washington backtracked. It's now laying low. But the damage was done. The coalition imploded. And it's up to others to stop this. We do not believe that the U.S. will protect the Kurds. The U.S. strategy depends on creating new chaos in the Middle East to pursue its interests in this region. It is sad. Washington set the fire that is now consuming its own anti-ISIS coalition and burning Afrin to the ground. The U.S. role has been reduced to diligently expressing its concern. Worry, but not regret. Now, that's something that Middle East analyst Joshua Landis agrees with. He says the Kurds have fallen victim to America's power play in that region. The U.S. has been supplying a lot of weaponry to the Kurds east of the Euphrates. When the United States first entered into Syria, it, uh, Turkey and the United States came up to an agreement that everything west of the Euphrates was Turkey's. Everything east of the Euphrates, the United States. Uh, Menbij is a sore point, but that's still to be decided on. But that's the way it's been. And the United States has been giving a lot of weapons to the YPG. Now, it's obviously telling the YPG, do not attack Turkey with these weapons, because the moment you do that, you will justify everything that Erdogan says is going to happen, that you're connected with the PKK. And so the United States is sitting on the curves and, in, in essence, is telling the YPG, you have to sacrifice your brothers in Afrin to preserve U.S. help 
east of the Euphrates. Meantime, the situation in another Syrian hotspot is developing too. Violence in the eastern Ghouta area, close to the Syrian capital Damascus, is on the rise, and it's provoked an outcry from the United Nations too. The organization is calling for an end to hostilities after what's going on there, following reports that government airstrikes on the rebel enclave there have killed at least 100 in just the last recent days. Eastern Ghouta is one of the few remaining opposition strongholds. The Syrian government says its strikes on the militants are in retaliation, though, for shelling attacks that have killed civilians in the capital. The area, may recall, was uh, among the de-escalation zones that were established by the warring parties last year. We'll be across that story, of course, as more comes out from that area. Keep you up to date on the developments there over the coming hours and days.